This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Every time I'm uh, preparing myself to the class to give those uh, wonderful speeches, so Shemit Barach is um, waking up different points in my heart that I will um, that I will work on those ones probably because those things need to to get to you so uh, I'm trying to do my part on uh, cleaning myself as much as I can to pass the message that will be as clean as can be while passing through me to you from the loving hands of the Creator. You went under Shana Maharaj? Yeah. And um, in the most amazing way, a person is uh, always trying to find answers to his questions and trying to figure out what Hashem wants from him. But um, through my inner search and finding answers inside my, uh, my soul, my emotional body and my spirit, I found out that the Creator is talking to us in a way that is much, much deeper than we even would hope that it would be. The Creator is talking to us through us. When you speak to your friend, so when you ask him a question, when you tell him something, so you're expecting the answer to come out from outside that you just now gave out your thought you asked him a question and then he replies then he answers you but when you speak to the Creator so David Amelech is saying, Mideida while I'm speaking to him, Zachor is Keren Od, I'm gonna remember him more. While I'm speaking, listen to your own speech, listen to the words. Hashem is so great that he's beyond this world. He's got abilities that are way, way higher than what we expect him to have. We don't understand how deep he is inside of our thoughts. Like the, the verse is saying, before you're going to call me, I'm already going to answer. For us, it's impossible even to understand. It cannot be. How can it be? For I'm going to ask him, oh, so now you need to say yes. He knows all the thoughts. He knows more than the, all the thoughts. He's the one that put those thoughts into your mind. And many people are losing track because of that, because people are running too deep with their thoughts, trying to become spiritual, and they're trying to understand, okay, so where is the free choice? So if I don't have a choice, so if Hashem is choosing, if Hashem is putting those thoughts in my mind, so what? So I'm saying to all of those people that with no criticism, just from 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 my 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 bleeding heart from my crying heart i'm telling you guys don't be wise guys don't try to think too much try to be more honest with yourselves and relax and stop questioning all of the time on hashem's existence and on hashem's power and on hashem's way and about the rules of the torah and about if i'm going to be punished or not going to be punished going to be Drop your nonsense and, and keep the simplicity in your avodah while you're trying to serve. And even if you don't understand it completely, just keep on doing your job. And with the time, the answers will come and the understandings will, will penetrate. And, and, and the water will, will fill 
all the gaps and, and the, the thinnest cracks of them all. And uh, you know, when, when, when a person is coming to that place that he's, that he's having a conversation with the Creator, he can hear the voice of the Creator coming out of his own mouth while he's speaking to Hashem. Means that when you go and have your Hidvodedut, when you go and you speak to Hashem in Barach, first of all, the first thing that you need to listen to is to your prayers, it's to your words. What was I praying for? What was I asking for? Where those requests came from? What is so painful for me from inside that brought me to ask that question? And also, what brought me to ask that question in the way that I asked? Who am I? Hashem is revealing those answers to you while you're asking your questions. From asking those questions, you can learn who you are, why you're asking. And those ask questions that you ask are, are only simple requests of a person that is trying to find a way. To find a way is to find out who you really are. So we must work hard on our self-awareness, to work on ourselves, to understand who we are, and what is the mission, and what is the purpose of our life, and why we're here, and who we really are. And while working on that, you can achieve the heights. Now, a friend of mine spoke with me today and asked me to tell him again a certain story that I told a few years ago in one of my lectures. And I didn't have the time to, to answer for his request while I, was, uh, while I was talking to him over the phone. But I told him that uh, I promised him that I'm going to that I'm going to tell this story today in this class and I'm sure that it's going to help many, many of us as well. So, from this story, every person can understand how powerful and strong the Creator really is. But, again and again, it depends your ability to enjoy from His wisdom, from His power, depends in the point of honesty that you have while you see his wonders. For an example, if 1,000 people will sit and listen to a lecture to try to, to bring in the wisdom of Hashem, the lesson, the rebuke, the, the, the clear loving education that Hashem in Barach, the Creator, is providing to us while we're trying to do the best that we can. So just to grab it, to hold it with two hands. So when I was a soldier in the, in the army in Israel, so once in a while they would take um, us for a three days uh, vacation, trip, something like that, just to, to relax a little bit. So it was before of my tshuva, it was my, uh, the baby steps of my awakeness uh, process, finding my, myself. The army actually helped me a lot because it changed all of my um, my environment, instead of being attached to the same people that I grew up with, it took me to a different um, zone and I had to deal with more things on my own and especially the opinions and thoughts that were new to me, that came out from mouths of, of my new friends in the army and certain situations over there that woke me up to, to start investigating and thinking in a deeper way about myself. So when we went to that trip, so, um, 
So they took us to the north to 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 see the um, the old synagogue of the first settlers in Roshpina. Roshpina is one of the cities in the north, close to Tzfat. And um, when we came to that ancient old synagogue, it's a beautiful synagogue with 12 windows, like the, the Halakha is saying that the best way to build a synagogue is with 12 windows. And... Um, And when I was, and when we were there, we came into that synagogue. Everyone were very impressed. Everyone were very excited to, to see that place. It was beautiful. the The ceiling were were painted in uh, amazing drawings, and 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 everything is old and 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 beautiful. And from the windows, you can see the old cemetery that's in the valley. Under the under the under the mountain that 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 synagogue is on top of that mountain, and in that valley there is a an, the old graveyard of of Roshpina. and uh, those settlers that built that synagogue are buried over there in that graveyard in the valley. And um, we came as secular soldiers to that synagogue. We didn't really care, we didn't really know about the Jewish rules that you need to sit separately, men and women, and we, we didn't thought about those things at all. For us it was not a religious um, experience, it was just like learning a little bit history, whatever, spending time, all of the friends together. And um, I was... Uh, I was wearing my, usually that's what I was wearing, black pants and um, black tank top and leather um, belt with uh, silver spikes and my black Dr. Martins and with my spikes on my, uh, my head, whatever. I had my tattoos all over my uh, my body, and I was uh, I was cool. And I had a black hat, I remember as well. And um, and when we came, so everyone just sat randomly, took places, and there was a guide, a, a person that taught us, a teacher that was telling us about the settlers and the wars that they had with the, with, the, with the Arabs in those days on the, on their, on the war of, of, of coming back home still haven't finished that war but he was telling us that piece of history on the war of those settlers and how the Arabs were shooting and whatever and many died, and and then he mentioned the fact that those settlers are buried over there in that uh, graveyard in front of our eyes, beyond the uh, um, the other side of the the valley. And then he said to us that if those settlers would um, would see us today, how that we came with no religion, with no respect to the Jewish rules, sitting like that, mixing, mix sitting in the, in the synagogue, he said for sure they would be very upset. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone are sitting on their seats and their chairs, and I, some kind of uh, prophecy, I don't know, sparks from the future, I went up to the stage immediately. It was like a, a natural thing for me to go and to to stand on the bima on the stage. <laughs> I don't know, but Hashem just sent me over there, and I was standing in the place of the chazan, in the place of the rabbi that the rabbi is supposed to to stand and to speak. 
And I was just standing over there. And when that person just said those words, if the settlers that built that synagogue would have seen us sitting now like that, they would be very angry. They would be very upset. He just finished completing that sentence. And all of the windows, one after the other, were immediately closed and open again, one after the other. Like boom, 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 boom. Twelve windows, one after the other. And everyone watching them, closing and opening, one after the other. Bang, 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 bang. All of those twelves like that in a circle. And people were screaming over there. It was, it was, it was terrifying. People were very scared. A friend of mine, he found the kippah, a head cover on the on the shelf. Immediately took it and and ran out from the synagogue. And other people, everyone, like something happened to him. And I was very excited. I was very happy to see that that the world contains spirituality. That really spirits. Our exist and everyone saw it. There was no argument. Everyone were talking about it. All of the people that were there, all of the soldiers, and it was a clear evidence that what that he said one second before was right. And immediately like, there were women that were covering themselves over there, and and uh, and it was a very clear message. So I took it very seriously. I took that as a clear sign from heaven that things are happening in this world. That this world is not an empty world. This world contains spirituality. And the way to connect yourself to that spirituality is only by your point of truth. How thirsty you are really to connect yourself to the truth. What are you looking for from life? What do you want to achieve from life? What really you want to do in your life? Thank you. What do you really want to achieve from life? And, and that's what you're going to receive. That's what the day will provide you from heaven. It depends in your honesty. What is your search? What is your goal? There is an amazing story about Rabbi Eliezer ben Urkenus. He was the son of a very rich, wealthy person, Urkenus. And he desired to learn Torah. And he was, if I'm not wrong, he was 27 years old, or 27 or 23, but I think he was 27 years old. And he never learned Torah, Eliezer ben Orkenus. And he was crying, I want to learn Torah, I want to learn Torah, I want to learn Torah, I want to learn Torah. And then he went to Jerusalem, and he went, and he learned Torah from the mouth of Rabbi Yochanan uh, ben Zakkai. Rabbi Yochanan was his rabbi, and he taught him, he was the prince of Israel. And he taught him all of his wisdom. And when he, when finally Rabbi, Yohan, Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus opened his mouth after learning for a few years from Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, the, his face was shining like the sun in, in, in the noontime. Like the face of Moshe Rabbeinu when he was giving the Torah. So you're talking about a person that is learning only a few years and that before of that, he was 27 years old and he never learned anything. When he first came to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, Rabbi Yochanan asked him, okay, what do you, what do you know? He told him nothing. He didn't know how to say Kriyat Shema. He didn't know how to say to bless on the food, Birkat Amazon. He didn't know how to stand Shemun Asre. He didn't know the halachot, the basic rules. He didn't know. He was 27 years old. So now you're going to say, no, it's a Dezer ben Orkenos, no, it's Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was 40 years old when he started his tshuva process. So why won't you accept that you also can achieve the level of Rabbi Akiva? So what if you're 40? So what if you started your tshuva when you were 27? Or, or later, or even 60? You don't know. For sure we have stories of people that started their tshuva when they were 60 and also achieved huge levels students of the Baal Shem Tov or whatever. Rabbi Akiva was 40 years old. It's crazy. Yes. And, 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 and when you understand that those people really achieved huge levels, so you ask yourself, okay, how? How? Because it was Rabbi Akiva? No, that's a lie. That's a lie that you're making up for yourself 
to avoid to 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 avoid yourself to to exempt yourself from having that potential to achieve your travels. You rather to say no, you know, Rabbi Akiva, he was a special soul. Rabbi Akiva was like this. Rabbi Akiva was like that. No, are you comparing me to Eliezer Ben Orkanus? I'm asking you, why not? Why not? Why not to believe that the Creator gives you also a potential to become a prophet? Why not? Why not? Why not to believe in the simple words that the Torah is telling us that if we will keep the Torah, that if we will follow the guidings of the righteous people, if we're going to follow and obey the will of the Creator, not some crazy rabbis that are coming with their twisted methods and now you need to follow whatever this rabbi is telling you and now you have that rabbi and you need to follow him and that rabbi and, that, and suddenly you hear rumors about that rabbi. I'm not telling you follow rabbis. I'm telling you follow the truth. <coughs> Why not to believe that you have an inner access to the truth, to the Creator? And now when the Creator connects you from inside, you don't need anything else. You have Hashem. So how are you going to find Hashem? It depends on your honesty. <coughs> in the intention of your heart. So what you need to do? You need to uncover, unleash your heart. You must save yourself, release yourself from your, from your prison from your fears, from your anxieties, from your stress, from, from all of the imaginations that are blocking you from finding your true self. You need to be honest with yourself and to ask yourself like a warrior, like a hero, who am I and what am I doing in this world? What is the purpose of my existence? Why am I here? Why am I here? What is the purpose? To wake up every morning, to go to the synagogue, to pray shacharit, to eat only kosher, to live religious life. That's your purpose. If that's your answer, perfect. Go with that. Maybe you have something else. I once spoke to my rabbi long, long time ago, and he told me, if people got talents, abilities, that they've been blessed in certain talents, they're not allowed to sit all day long in the Beit Midrash and learn Torah. They must use the talents that the Creator gave them. Because if they're going to sit and learn Torah all day long, they're not going to use the talents that God gave them. So, what they've been, those talents have been given to those people for? For what? Now, you know how to play the guitar, but you don't touch the guitar. Why you don't touch the guitar? Because I read it to learn Torah. Great, so why Hashem gave you that ability to play the guitar. You are now taking that gift that you received from heaven and you reject it. You say to Hashem, no Hashem, I'm sorry, I'd rather to do something higher. What do you know? The Rambam is saying that a person cannot be a prophet, cannot receive prophecy, cannot see the Creator unless he's happy and he hears music Instruments, people playing music and everyone are having fun and he is now climbing to a high place and over there when he's happy and he's singing and he's dancing, there in that place he can see Hashem. He can see those amazing visions that Hashem is showing him with no drugs, with no alcohol, with no medicines. Only through his happiness and joy. Okay, now, so you have that power. You have that talent. King David was playing music. Shaul, that he was the first king of our nation. Shaul was calling King David to come and to play for him. Why? Because he was sad. Because he was depressed. Because he was going through things. And he needed someone to come and to play for him. So who he called? He called King David. And King David came and was playing for him, making music. So now you got that gift and you're going to reject it. Why? Because you'd rather to learn Torah. Okay, great. So you're wiser than King David. Fantastic. Everyone are clapping to you right now. Amazing. Be wiser than King David. You know better. 
Hashem gave you a talent, Hashem gave you an ability, Hashem connected you, now you have a certain key, you have an access to something colorful that God made in His world. You know how to illustrate, you know how to sing, you know how to dance, you know how to run, you know how to play basketball. You think there is no purpose for that? So why God made you with that ability to throw from the half of, of the court to, and, and, and to shoot those hoops? How? How? how why? Why Hashem gave you that ability to play with a ball like, like you're born with that ball? Why? Why? For no reason? Try to think. Dare to think. Dare to think. Don't follow those people that are blocking you from your true potential. Listen to that voice. I'm not telling you go and play in the NBA. I don't know. Maybe you should go and play in the NBA. I don't know. Maybe. But something can be done with your talent. I am telling you that for sure. You can go and you can find some young kids and play with them. You can do wonders. You can play. You can run. You can jog. You can sing. You can perform. You can do amazing things with your talent. And even if your talent now is to be the best lawyer in town and you have the biggest, most successful office in Manhattan, still try to think why Hashem put you in that position? What can you do with your ability? With your money, with your wisdom, with your memory, with your power, with numbers, with whatever Hashem gave you. With that you need to work. Because those are the tools that the Creator gave you. Now one person can sit and listen to people for hours. Another person can immediately make combinations and make connections between things. And you have your own talents, and you must use them. Because when Hashem gave you those tools, He gave you those tools for a purpose, for a reason. And you need to investigate and to ask, who am I? And it's not hard. It's just a simple, honest conversation between you to yourself. Bring the Creator to be a guest. To compromise between you two, <laughs> between you to yourself, that you have wars all of the time, that you hate yourself, that you blame yourself, that you criticize yourself, that you rebuke yourself, that you destroy yourself, that you want to revenge and kill yourself. Okay, great. So bring Hashem, that Hashem's name is Shalom, His name is Peace. Let him come and make peace between you two. <laughs> the right side and the left side of your brain, the right side and the left side of your heart that are banging each other and killing each other. And bring Oseh Shalom bin Romav, the one that makes the peace in heaven between the angels, to the, to, between the fire and the water and, and, and makes it all work together. He will make, we are Shalom Aleinu, inside of us, He will make peace. So call Hashem. Hashem, today I want to discuss something, I want to talk to you. And when you're going to open your mouth like that and just listen to your own prayer, listen to your voice, listen to the questions that you ask. And if it's hard for you to remember, so write it down. Not everyone got perfect memory. Me, for an example, I don't remember my name sometimes. I'm so used to be called Rav, Rav, Rav. I don't remember. Sometimes you forget. Sometimes you forget your, your, your home address. Sometimes you forget the number of your shoes. You don't know. You don't remember. So if that's who you are, ask Hashem, Hashem, why? Why always forget? Why always neglect? Why always mistake? Why always embarrassing myself? Why I'm always making those nonsense? Why I always ruin relationships. Why Hashem? Why I had to destroy this thing? Why Hashem? Why, why I have a part in the destruction of the temple? Why? Why? Why I'm not able to wake up in the mornings? Why? Why do I need to suffer Hashem? Why? What's the purpose of my sorrow Hashem? What's the purpose of my pain? Why I can't be healthy? Why I can't be strong? Why I'm not married? Why I don't have children? Why I didn't buy a house yet? Why I need to work in that job? Why? But listen, you will feel your fears already while you're asking. You will feel something. Your stress, your, your, your poverty, your spiritual, your emotional poverty. 
I don't know. Okay, what don't you know? I don't know who I am. Okay, so ask, who are you? Who are you? Who really are you? Who are you? When you're going to try to think about those high, high, high things, you're going to come to some answers. And those answers will connect you completely to the Creator. You will be able to speak with Him face to face. Face to face. Face to face. I'll tell you something about my jacket. You see that long jacket? I'll tell you something about it. One time, I was doing it for the dude in my house in Jerusalem. I was praying deep into the night and I was crying to Hashem Barach to give me a certain spiritual level that I was hoping to achieve. And I said it to Hashem. I told Hashem Barach, please answer my prayer and let me, and then I mentioned the verse, Shifchi libech kamayim nochach pnei Hashem. That I'll have the ability to pour my heart like water in front of you, Hashem. That I will be able to pray to you like you pour water. Easily, that they're spreading and, and, and catching the, the shape of the vessel, immediately going deep into their cracks. I beg to Hashem, please, I want to pray like that to you. Give me that ability. I was asking that request and I fell asleep. Something like between falling asleep and just dozed off. I, I went somewhere. Hashem took me somewhere. And then I saw a very old person that's sitting wearing this cloak. Exactly the same cloak. And I didn't have that cloak back then. And I saw a very old person with very gray, white beard sitting in his chair, probably in his house, wearing like slippers, home slippers, and wearing this jacket, long jacket, and just thinking. That's what I saw. I saw a huge righteous man. It felt very holy to me. I didn't know anything. I woke up, finished my Ibodadut, and in the next day I went and I spoke with my Rebbe, and I told him what I saw, what I was asking, and what I saw. And he told me, you saw Rabbi Yudha Zev Levovich. He was a righteous man that passed away a few years ago, that his name was Rabbi Yudha Zev Levovich. Great! And my Rabbi knew him. I never saw him yet before that day. But he told me that how that you described him and that cloak, that outfit that you described to me, it's him. And it is the real vision that you saw and he revealed himself to you and it's a proof, it's an evidence, that vision that you had, that your prayer been accepted. Because Rabbi Yudha Zev Lebovich achieved that level. Okay, can you do something with that information? Nothing like you. I didn't know what to do with that. Okay, great. Thank you, Hashem. I was happy. Nice to do it. Great, whatever. Didn't know what to do with that. But after a few years, I heard, I saw Abuda Zerovich a few times after it, and thank God. But after a few years, maybe four years from that day, in one of the nights, I received a phone call from a good friend of mine. His name is Rab Aaron Yitzchak Stern. He's the son of Rabbi Alter David Chaim Stern from Bnei Brak. And Rab Aaron told me that they need help with certain handwrites of Rabbi Yudazev Levovich. They want to find a rabbi that knows halacha, that knows Kabbalah, that will be able to, to explain, to understand the deep, deep handwrites in Kabbalah of Rabbi Yudazev Levovich. So he called me to ask me if I'm familiar with a person like that, with a rabbi that is very gifted in Kabbalah, that he will be willing to, to, to put some time on the handwrites of Rabbi Yudazev Levovich. So I told him, yes, I know the perfect person for that. 
there is a rabbi. He's the rabbi that married my wife and, and I. He's amazing. His name is Rabbi Yochai Raz. He's a genius in Kabbalah. He learns Baal Sulam. He's a genius. And he's a very positive and friendly person. I love him. And for sure that he will be willing to, to help. So he said, great. So come to my house. Take the books and show it to him. Let's see. So, to make a long story short, I went, I drove, I, I, I was doing all of the, 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 the sweating part, all of the effort I was driving, taking it, meeting with him and going back, and I put a lot of effort, and in the end, thank God the result was wonderful, and they were able to bring out those handwrites, those scripts of Rabbi Dazev Levovich, and hopefully soon it will see the light in, uh, in a deeper way to become to be a book, but as for those days, we achieved what we wanted, we accomplished what we, what we hoped to achieve. And then, I had to bring back the books to Rab Aaron. So I took all of the books of Rabbi Yudazev Lebovich, his books that he was learning, and while he was learning, he was writing to himself on the sides or between the lines, comments of his wisdom, of his understandings in Kabbalah, things, secrets. Um, I promise you that angels can't understand what that he wrote over there. It is so high, so it's huge, huge wisdom. And I took those books and I drove with them to Bnebrak to bring them back to Rav Aronstern. And when, when I brought them into his house, so he told me, now I want to give you a gift. And he went to another room, and he came back with that cloak. And he gave me that cloak that Rabbi Yudazev Levovich was wearing, usually, in his house. And I saw Rabbi Yudazev Levovich wearing that cloak. Mm -hmm. So, again, how you achieve those things? What you need to do? Like I told you in the beginning, when I saw that vision while I was doing this in Badadut, okay, great, thank you, Hashem, wow, exciting in Badadut, whatever. That it, that's not the main thing. The main part was that I was honest while I was asking my request that I will achieve that level, that my prayers will flow like water. That I will be able to express myself, to tell Hashem in Barach all of my heart, like water, in front of Hashem. That prayer was an honest prayer that had been accepted. And it, when it had been accepted, I've been answered in a way that I couldn't even plan, couldn't even think, couldn't even dream of. So, things like that can take place in each and every one of you guys' life. You just need to be honest. And one step will bring you to the next. It's not because of my legacy, and not because of the merit of my ancestors, and not because of my uh, black leather belt with spikes when I was 18 and 19 years old. It's not that. It's only because of the honesty in the way that I was expressing myself while I was talking to the Creator. And this is something that you cannot exempt yourself from. You cannot say, I'm not able to do that. To be honest is not beyond your power. It's not. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe sometimes it's too painful to do that. Maybe sometimes it's very hard to do that. But it's not impossible. There is nothing that is impossible when you believe that the Creator is above nature. My point today in my Avodat Hashem is to uncover the fact that the Creator is above nature. That's my point. That's where I'm holding today. You have people that are holding with gratitude. You have people that are holding with keeping Torah mitzvot and being so strict, you have many people with many methods, many ways, and everyone should work on what that is shining inside of them, and I'm supporting it. Great, do your job. Be who that you are. My point today is to reveal to the world that the Creator is above nature and He can make wonders now in this world. And no one can see that. 
but that's my point. So if I'm just not going to drop that point, I'm just going to continue to believe in myself, and I'm going to bring down those wonders to the world that everyone will enjoy that. Not because it's me. Because Hashem wants every person to go with His point in Avodat Hashem. For me, it's not enough that you will be answered on your prayer or that you're going to receive what that you want or what that you hope to. It's not enough for me. Tell me that I'm going to receive, I don't know what, houses and health, long life for me. For, it's not enough for my children, my, my, love, my wife. My, okay, it's not enough. For me, it's not enough. Tell me you're going to know all the Torah. I don't need that. I don't want that. It's not, I'm not thirsty for that. Millions of dollars, houses. It's not my point. It's not what I lack of. What that I lack of is that we're going to remove that covering from the greatness of the Creator. I cannot stand that darkness anymore. I cannot. That's my point. Nothing will satisfy me before the complete redemption. Nothing that you're going to offer me. Give me a billion dollars. Nothing. Okay, thank you. Let's see what we're doing with it. Nothing going to satisfy my thirst because my thirst is for something else. I want to show to the world <coughs> that the Creator is life and exists exactly like that He was showing His face to us when we came out of Egypt. I want those wonders. I want bigger wonders than those. And I'm not going to rest before of that. I'm not going to stop. I'm not desiring anything else that will satisfy me before of the redemption day, before of Gulat Israel, before of the redemption of the wide world. I'm not planning to stop. Why? Because to stop, it's to lie to myself. To stop, it's to cheat. It's to drop my dream. And I'm not planning to do that. We're in it to win it. We're here to do that. Now, one person needs to work hard to find his point of truth. I know my point of truth, and I'm not moving. I found my point. I know exactly what, what I want to bring down to this world. That's my point. Hashem is above nature. The Creator is not limited at all. He can bring out babies from the walls. I believe in all of the Midrashim. I believe. The children of Israel, when they were thrown to the Nile, the Egyptians thought they killed them. They were drinking milk and honey from, from how you say, Chaluke Nachal, those stones, those smooth stones that were like, like, like marbles. Shells. Shells. No, not shells. Like those, those round of, of the river, round stones that, that you can find in the rivers. Marbles. Those smooth ones. Those marbles. Marbles, something like that. They were sucking milk and honey from those, from those stones. And they survived in the Nile. So, I believe in that. Now, maybe you don't believe in that. Maybe you don't believe in that. I believe in that. So, I want Hashem to show us that. From things that I saw with my eyes, that Hashem shown me with my eyes, things that I achieved in my Buddha, things that Hashem shown me, I know how the redemption is going to look like. I saw those things with my eyes. Hashem opened my heart and my eyes to see those things. And I saw them. Now you can say about me whatever you want. I couldn't care less. I'm sorry. I don't care what you can think, what everyone can think. I know what I saw. I know what Hashem showed me. So now with that, I need to work. That's my job. Not to move to the sides. Not to think about anything else except of how we going to show the world that the Creator is with us. We're in it to win it. To reveal the world that God is with us. So what now? There is a lot of work to do with Him. There is a lot of work to do with you. <laughs> there is a lot of work to do with me. There is a lot of work to do. So we're going to work. We're not afraid of the effort. We're not afraid from the tears. We're not afraid from, from the pain, from the sweat. Ready. We're ready to work. Ready to rock. Ready to work. We're ready. I hope you're ready. <laughs> if you're not ready, so uh, get ready. <laughs> it's about to come.
Okay, thank you very much. I love you all. Hashem will bless you. Much happiness and success. Please support us, help us, share all of those videos. Like us on uh, Facebook. Share those um, fantastic videos with your friends on YouTube, on Facebook. Visit our website, emuna.com. Buy the book. It's too much for you. And you know why I called it, it's too much for you? Because it's too much for you. <laughs> It's really too much for you, but I'm going to pray for you that you're going to achieve it and that you will get a lot. Thank you. Be blessed. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.